Anyway, I'm Cherie. I'm Chris. And we're Technomadia. We live in a bus, at least some of the time. And one of the frequent questions that we field so often is about size of an RV and what matters, and also why we don't have slides. So we thought yeah. we'd try to address both of those yeah. People questions. Are, we, we've actually been in a, in a huge range of sizes. So we started off in a 16-foot travel trailer, very tiny clamshell, then a 17-foot um, travel trailer with a bigger truck pulling it, and then now a 35-foot bus. And then, we, of course, in 12 years on the road, we've been in a lot of other RVs of every possible size. We'll probably put that in the middle so that we're both okay. better. The microphone. <laughs> Holds up pretty well. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, so let's just first start with length of an RV. Now, obviously, if you're going small, if you're something that can fit in a regular size parking uh, lot, like just like a car, a van, uh, or a small Class C. Yep. Yeah. Now, even even a, a Winnebago view can sort of squeeze into a, a, a traditional parking spot, overhanging in every possible direction. But once you get any larger than that it's not going to work. So then suddenly it changes everything about where you can go because you now need to start looking for pull through spots, you know, like or back ends of parking lots or places where you can go in and take up four or five spots sideways. And that's talking about like passing through or even overnighting in a lot. Now, when you're a small size, especially if your RV kind of looks like a normal passenger vehicle, you can get away with a lot more of what we call stealth camping or staying in parking lots and uh, or even driveway surfing with in neighborhoods where it might not, might not be allowed to overnight in an RV. But if you're smaller, definitely under, I would say about 22 feet, 24 feet is about the max size that you want to go if you want to be able to fit where cars go. And we've traveled in two travel trailers in that size range, but of yeah. course we had the vehicles in right. front of them. And we've also borrowed and rented small RVs in that size. I can tell you, it's really nice to have the flexibility to go pretty much anywhere you want to go. They're also, you're paying the price with, with constraints. You jump once you go past a little bit further, but you got to watch out for now you're starting to run into limitations on the places you can go into. And actually even some national parks mm -hmm. have caps on size. So you get to some of the, the national parks, forest service campgrounds, uh, even some county and state parks. They're maybe more rustic. They're maybe up twisty mountain roads. They're in wooded campgrounds. Some of these parks, they have limits of somewhere in the 23 to 26 or 27 foot range. Um, one of our favorite parks that we love is uh, uh, Wheeler National Park. Is that what it's called? Baker? Wheeler Peak, Ma Mount Baker or something. Yeah, it's, uh, uh... it's on the eastern side of Nevada. We stopped there twice when we had the small trailers. The upper campground has a limit. I think it's of 27 feet. So once we got larger, um, we couldn't go there anymore. And it's a place that we used to enjoy routing to and stopping along the way when we did cross-country repositionings. But there's a lot of campgrounds um, that are like that. And it may not be that the spots are size limited, but that the roads getting there, they're just too twisty turny for mm -hmm. larger RVs. Right. So, you know, again, so then you start to push up to a little bit bigger. Uh, we find the 35-foot size is an actually a very much a sweet spot because that was the legal maximum limit throughout uh, much of the 60s when a lot of these old parks were being built. So they were sized for 35-foot vehicles. And 35-foot gets you in a lot of places. There's still some spots we can't go into or some even in parks we can go into, some of the smaller spots we can't fit. But 35 is a very sweet size. Yeah. And that's why we decided to go with a vintage bus conversion is we wanted the benefits of a bus conversion, which is the heavier construction build and um, having a lot more flexibility <laughs> and that sort of things. But going vintage kept us in the 35 foot range so we could fit into a lot more state parks and federal parks, which is really what we love. Um, we love boondocking as well, but state parks, Army Corps of Engineer parks, Forest Service campgrounds, that's where we love being because you kind of get this merging of having amenities, being out in nature, um, and having that campground field. And that's where we find is yeah. our happy place. Um, so 35 feet is, is kind of the max you want to go if you want um, to really keep your options open and stay in a lot of public campgrounds, especially mm -hmm. older ones. Now you go larger than 35 feet, it's not like you're not going to have options. Yes. Like this campground that we're in, this is an Army Corps of Engineer campground in eastern Texas. Um, there are lots of spots here for larger RVs. Um, there's a, a friend of our, one of our patrons is here with us. He's got a 40 foot RV um, and no problem at all, but there's some spots. There's a sweet spot at the other end of the peninsula over there that would have given us a fantastic panoramic water view. 
but it has a 30 foot limit on it yeah and we probably could have squeezed in with a 35 with using the overhanging the back of the site and um you know know your overhangs really matters but we would have had no place for the park or toad so you know you really start to get constrained in some some of those interesting places and there have been plenty of times that we have traveled with friends who have 40 foot and 45 foot rvs and we've had more site selection than they did because we're only 35 foot and sometimes that's amounted to us getting the sweet waterfront spot well they had a, a different spot than yeah. us in a different area of the campground now 45 is about the limit you'll see on um on class a's um pretty much anywhere um, other than strange custom one-off things. So 45 is a very big vehicle. And once you get to that size, you're actually starting to look at vehicles that need a second axle, rear axle, so a tag axle. So that ups your... No, in motorhomes. Yeah, yes, in motorhomes. You, in fifth wheels, you're getting up to maybe three axles. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, there's some ridiculous fifth wheels. Um, whole, nother, whole nother ball of wax there, because when you combine the fifth wheel with the monster truck pulling it, you're pushing up to 65 feet, and even bigger, we know some people push, push beyond that. The legal limits on the highway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so 45 foot for a motorhome is, is the limit. And you really, you know, we know people who love rigs that big, but it does constrain you quite a bit. It's not that you're not going to be able to find spots. There, RVs are getting larger and larger and campgrounds are adapting to it. Like the Florida State Park System, they're going back and refitting a lot of their campgrounds to have larger spots and even putting in sewer hookups for full hookups. And of course, private campgrounds tend to have larger spots and there are RV resorts that are catering to larger RVs. So it's not like you won't have options. It's just what type of camping and stays do you want to have <laughs> and what options do you want to have open? Um, so you've got to find that sweet spot and um, you will find options. It's just, it's a little more limiting the larger you go, but plenty of people in larger RVs and even 45 foot RVs stay in amazing places, even the same campgrounds we do. So the space you want and you know how much you prioritize being in the places you want to be versus being anywhere yep. you want to be so yep. um, another thing about um, size is the width of your RV so there's basically you know for the longest time 96 inches was the maximum width and that's what our bus is. and our bus is you know from the 1961 bus that was the max legal highway width and a lot of roads in the Northeast in particular are designed for that maximum width um, eventually, um, I think it started late 60s and into the 70s, the legal limit for width was 102 inches, so six inches wider, and that's what roads were designed around. Um, so there's not most roads you can navigate just fine with 102 inches, and that's what almost all larger RVs are sized to today, that extra six inches. You do have to be watch out. There are a couple roads. There are some roads, particularly in the northeast and older roads, that it is illegal, and they'll be marked that you cannot go on with a... Um, a lot larger wider vehicle um, and turns become a little more difficult traffic gets a little more intimidating in a larger <laughs> size so there are advantages to being narrower uh, we definitely do appreciate ours only being eight feet wide um, but there's that um, another consideration is the height of your RV and that impacts things like low clearances and also low, uh, trees and campgrounds <laughs> that you have to navigate around. Now, the, the most important thing with height is knowing your height, knowing exactly how tall your RV is so that you don't freak out when you see the low clearance sign of you know 13 feet or 12 feet ahead. If you know you can get under it, you can relax. Um, do leave a margin of error, but know your height. Know it inside and out. Um, and keep in mind that not just the height of the physical RV, but the things on top of your RV, your air conditioners, antennas, and things like that. because that can make a difference as well. Um, keep in mind you're going to that the actual height is and the clearance might be because it might have been paved at different times. Let's see. Going in closer? Going closer just a, brings it a little bit closer to the, the network too. There we are. Low clearances and avoiding crashing into bridges and things like that and knowing more about the height. So definitely know your height. Another consideration with size is the weight of your RV. And there's the weight with it empty, and then there's the cargo capacity or the gross, the gross vehicle weight. Yeah, one thing that's kind of criminal is how many new RVs are, you know, sold by the dealers, you know, fully decked out with options. And if you were to fill the water tanks, they're technically illegal to drive. And I, that, that actually happens. Um, so know what your actual carrying capacity is. You, know, you might be shocked if you have a, um, a lot of commercial RVs. Um, and know when you're pushing it and when you're you might be over the limit or what the the road limits are you might want to drive down 
Yeah. So you might find some bridges have like, oh, you can only have a 15 ton vehicle. Well, if you're over 15 tons, that can be difficult. Now our RV is, uh, I think our gross is 32,000, but we weigh in at 24,000. That's an advantage of a bus conversion. <laughs> um, so you have a lot of extra weight to deal with. It's, even that's fully loaded. We had we did the Escapee Smart Way a couple years yes. ago with all the tanks full and us in it and everything fully loaded. We're 24,000 pounds. So that's really nice to know for us. It's also important to know for how to properly inflate your, um, I think we're talking Talk about slides. Length with heights and now slides. Like we get the question all the time of like, do you wish you had slides or when you did your renovation, why didn't you put in slides? And you know, could you put in slides in this? And in our particular case, our particular bus, um, a GM4106 is built unlike most other vehicles on the road in that it is a more, and that means it would be structurally incredibly difficult to add slides to a, an RV like this, to a bus conversion like this. So, Putting aside on ours, no. And when you, what we found is, because we're moving up from a 17 foot travel trailer going to a 35 foot bus, we were already gonna be getting a lot of new space. So for us, having the extra space a slide would give us was not a deciding factor or important to us. So, and we're still happy with that decision seven years later on our bus. Yeah. It's it, a well-designed, a smartly thought out interior is much more important than um, the space that, uh, than slides. And you can actually, um, there's a lot of poorly thought out interiors with slides that make very, very poor use of space. And there's a lot of really smart thought out interiors with uh, non-slide RV layouts that make incredible use of the space. So it comes down more to layout than anything else. So yeah, look at the layout that's right for you and those you're traveling with. Uh, no slides works great for us, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be great for you because it really just so much comes down to your needs and your preferences and mm -hmm. and how um, um, claustrophobic you might be too mm -hmm. some people really need to have that inside open up wide space we've been in some 4106s the same model of buses ours that were converted very differently than ours where they made, made choices to put cabinetry down the entire length of the rv and to us that made it feel much more claustrophobic and that's one thing we really liked about the layout of ours it has minimal cabinets on the wall so that gives it on a the much upper more, walls yeah. on the upper walls it gives it much more of an open feel and, and a big giant full wall mirror on one side that just totally opens up the space so the the our our living room feels more spacious than a lot of um you know more modern traditional rvs with double slides and stuff but that does mean that when we're hanging out with friends, maybe in a campground with a bunch of RVing friends, we're not hosting at our RV. <laughs> we, uh, we, 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 we can have like five or six people over tops. Uh, comfortably, maybe one other couple over for, for happy hour is comfortable for us. We don't have a dining table. We don't. We can't really host much in our RV. And, and that's not a problem for us. We're introverts. <laughs> we prefer to not necessarily well, host a well, lot well, of people. If we're going to host a big group, we do it outside. We'll have mm -hmm. we'll actually put a projector and the movie screen out and we'll Appreciate travel who have <laughs> slides have reported anything from minor to major issues um, from slides failing or slides locking up or failing to close or coming misaligned or cracking or a lot a lot can go wrong with slides. <laughs> So we do like the simplicity of not having the setup and the take-in. You know, when we get to a spot, we like to just pretty much park and be there. Uh, right. There's not much to our setup. We, we plug into the electric. Maybe we fill the water tank. Yeah, if we need electric. Solar powered as well. Having much to get going in the morning or to get parked for the day. Yes. Um, stuck in the spot until I can figure out how to get them in. Now, the, the tip for if you are considering an RV with slides, um, don't get too excited by the floor plan when the slides are out. It also audition the RV, try it, see how livable it is when the slides are in, because there'll be times when you need to um, you know, be in the RV when the slides are in, we don't have the opportunity mm -hmm. to put them out. Some some overnight spots, you're in tight spots and you, yeah. there's not room to put slides Yeah, out. or if you're, you're um, Walmart docking and stuff like that, it's kind of rude to put your slides out in a lot of places. Um, so, so make sure your RV is livable even when the slides are in. Some of them are nicely so, and some of them are, you can't even open the fridge door. You can't get um, to the bathroom. You can't, yes. <laughs> so um, look at that, especially for full timing, if you want the flexibility, especially for overnight stays or if your slides get stuck in, you know. wraps up what we were going to be talking about. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go back. 
chat screen see if there's any okay. questions again apologies about the quality of this video cast we think youtube's having some sort of issue plus our signal here turns out to be not as great as we had hoped well we had to, we had to switch to the back these questions i put them in the chat window um i'll try to uh uh look back and see if there's any questions here if you ask questions earlier in the chat <laughs> i don't know that we will see them yes um and the chat window is not coming up do, 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 do. <sighs> yeah, it seems like the audio has been going in and out. Yeah, the. This may not be one that gets archived. <laughs> <laughs> we may no, have to the, redo this one sometimes. Yeah, yes, and, and particularly because we were just kind of, uh, I think, a little bit more scattered than usual because we were in such a rush to actually get on with the network dropping in and out. So we did do a lot of signal testing here at this location and. Um, we thought we had picked the most optimized set of all of the tests. The, the, the boosters were helping a lot in different situations, but we had one particular combination that was working great for upload speed and testing out and everything like that. But for whatever reason, the upstream path from that to YouTube, YouTube was not accepting the incoming video over that connection. The connection was plenty fast, and YouTube was just giving a random error. Something up in the YouTube. Uh, that was, you know, we're on AT&T both ways, but that was just the one different connection to AT&T versus another um, was failing. So we had to go to the, the secondary connection, secondary hotspot, and that one's upload speed is not nearly as good as the primary that we've been using. And, um, yeah, kind of really... We'll hang up for a little bit. If I'm going to let people see the yeah. pretty sunset for the moment. Yeah. We're on a pretty lake. Where are we? We're at a Hanks Creek campground. Um, Winest waterfront spot in uh, near like Hutchinson, Texas. Biggest Nearest big town is Lufkin the past week we actually leave in the morning and we are making our way to Fredericksburg Texas where we will be attending and presenting at the RV Entrepreneur Summit which we are looking forward to so we will be um, there through probably about mid-March when we start heading back to Florida to the boat leaving the bus for storage somewhere in mm -hmm. Texas hmm so it's been great. This little campground doesn't have many people here. So we've it's been nice to get some recharging time in, get caught up on some work before we go in. We know that uh, being, it's going to be more to be amongst 250 fellow uh, working on the road RVers, but uh, it's also going to be socially taxing for us introverts and for the extroverts too, I'm sure there. Uh, campfire tonight. We're actually not campfire people. Can bring out when we're socializing and it has uh, in general it's just the two of us uh, we prefer to curl up and uh, watch a movie in the evening after maybe a sunset walk and stuff like that um uh gregory says love the new fifth edition of our book it's necessary for practical network rv well, usage thank you so, thank you very much for that yeah the book just came out uh you can get more information on that our uh, work site <laughs> Um, I'd rather be skydiving says have we figured out the details of the sale of our Mini Cooper I think for now we've actually decided to keep it we're gonna drive it back to uh, to Florida and since we're gonna be doing some longer stays in marinas we're just gonna hopscotch it up the coast for a little bit yep yeah so the mini is going to live on for another season mm -hmm. uh, bear John was know how do we keep Kiki uh, from getting tangled on her lead um she kind of does that on her own so. yeah, she, she she's a master of knots when she wants to be tangled she can but be she tangled is, she is currently she is currently tangled underneath her chair oh goodness so, yes so but okay. yeah she she's a uh, she's been grown up on a leash so she, she she pretty much knows how to get tangled when she wants attention and yes yeah it seems to be she only gets tangled when she wants attention when she's hunting or anything like that she knows how to untie herself very well Okay. 
Oh, yeah, breathe the fresh air. We, we are still looking for the place to store our bus. We have, think we have a place lined up in Austin near where Cherie's brother is who will be able to keep an eye on it for us. So that should be our top. That'll be our top pick for bus storage. But we'll be worrying about that once we get to Austin and after the RV summit. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, I just got the hair chopped. It's always scary when you're on the <laughs> road and you just walk into a random hair place and say, okay, I had asked her just to take a couple inches off. She went a little crazy. So definitely, <laughs> a, definitely a, a new look. It's, I'm still getting used to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> oh, this is this is the first time we've seen uh, blue skies and sunshine in know, almost all week. It's been dreary here. A lot of rain. And very cold. We're getting in the mid 30s. That's why we did, one reason decided not to go as far north as we thought we would to to route here. But uh, this has been a good stop. So Kevin asked, uh, while traveling on highways, if there's an open uh, Department of Transportation way station, do RVs have to pull in? Only if you're registered as a commercial vehicle, right. uh, or, or if you have a commercial driver's license, do you need to pull into RV uh, way stations. Uh, most of them, I've never seen one that required RVs that are personal to have right. to, to pull in. I think a lot in a lot of places, they'll actually be kind of upset with you if you do, because you're interfering with their main business of the commercial vehicle. A recommendation to stop at Cooper's Barbecue in Lano, and um, uh, my brother actually loves that. He flies out there. Yeah, he actually goes by airplane. Um, we're not meat eaters, really, um, oh. so it's not oh, a high oh, priority. Oh yeah, barbecue turkey and you. Well, barbecue turkey. Yes. We don't eat red meat, or I don't. And um, he, <laughs> I eat we it. do occasionally. I'm a, I'm a flexitarian. And uh, the, the the thought of standing in line for three or four hours for anything just. Unless it's an iPhone. I'm, even these days, <laughs> even I don't think I do that anymore. I'm not, I'm not a fan of standing in line. Yes. Um, the carrier of choice today here, here in this part of Texas, and in Texas in general, AT&T seems to be the best. And in this part of Texas, um, it is the dominant carrier. It's the only one that is reasonably fast here. We, we're able to get online with uh, um, Verizon as well and T-Mobile. But both of those are very minimal connections. Um, so AT&T is working here. And um, even with two different ways of uh, uh, connecting to it, we had to, you know, improvise. But doing a video broadcast is probably the hardest thing you can, is the, the, the most difficult thing to do over mobile internet as fast uploads. Um, and here it's struggling. Although we've been able to watch the Olympics in HD and do a lot of video streaming, no problem. Yeah, and we did a, um, our, for our premium membership site at mobile internet, we host a live Q&A. We did that Sunday evening and had, I don't Zero. think, I think Zoom handled great for us. Yeah, yeah. The, you, you, whatever is going on with YouTube tonight is compounding with the network signal issues we're having here and just made this more painful than it should have been. Mm -hmm. I had a question of, do we ever have sleepover guests? Yeah, we, we've got a, a, a couple, one guest. Not the greatest. Um, and for a night or two, it's probably okay for the right guest. But, you know, they're sleeping in our living room, which is in our office, which is in our kitchen. Um and it has to be the right person because <laughs> I, I get very, very uh, on edge when people are in my house. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great for an overnight if, you know, somebody come, comes and visits us and then they're leaving the next morning. No problem. We have a sleepover party, but it's really hard for more than one night mm -hmm. the way our RV is set up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what is the smallest computer you would recommend to edit YouTube videos? Well, you're doing so this it on is here. <laughs> this is the uh, the MacBook. It's a 12 inch Retina screen, and I've been doing some video editing on, on it, and um, I do yell at it quite a bit. Um, it, it, it is frustrating to have the smaller screen. I like my 20 doing video stuff, which is one reason we decided to do this as a live cast instead of trying to edit a video on the road or on the bus. It's back on the boat, and uh, I personally I, I like a larger screen. And I don't like an integrated keyboard and mouse. I, I'm constantly fumbling with this. Um, but other people do just fine on smaller. They're much more tolerant. Yeah. I'm, I'm I, spoiled. Uh, quite a few people do video editing on like an iPad Pro too, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, a mon very very capable of doing some advanced video editing. But you got to get used to that type mm -hmm. of touch interface. Uh, we have a question. Buses have a reputation for getting stuck when not on pavement. Do you have a Pause the traction rear axle for boondocking. Um, no, um, and yeah, we we we've really 
barely ever gotten stuck. Um, we've done some pretty off-road, soft conditions. Um, we've had to put wood boards down a few times, but um, we've got decent knobby tires. And yeah, we, we did put knobby tires on the back to give us a little more traction. Um, and if we're at all concerned, one of us gets out and walks it. And if, right. our, if our foot sinks, we don't go there. <laughs> yeah, we, we, and, and, and also we try, if we do our in some place marginal, we don't let the wheel stop spinning or stop moving. So we mm -hmm. try to keep some momentum going. And so far, we've been really lucky. We've not gotten stuck. Gotten close a couple times, but not gotten stuck. Yeah, I just heard about the shooting in Florida. It is, oh, oh my God, it's tragic. I got 12 to 12 dead now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's, oh, oh, it's just, it breaks my heart. And mm. I haven't even barely seen the details. Just seen headlines pop up while we're, while we're doing this. I'm like, no. Oh, it's awesome. Oh. Um, question about, do you have to have a heavy vehicle license to drive a bus or a Class A RV? And that totally depends upon what state you're registered in. Most and, you don't. Uh, a lot of them you don't. Texas does require, has a special license for it. Florida, where we're registered, it does not. And there's a lot of confusion out there whether or not if you're driving in one of the states that requires it, if you need it. But, you know, Florida doesn't offer one. If we're in Texas, yeah. you know, like, how do we get that endorsement? No, it's, it's, yeah, there's never been an issue with people um, mm -hmm. going by their home state. So... Um, um, uh, the aluminum on a, on a 4106, somebody's asking me about polishing it. Um, the, it it's always been a, um, a matte satin aluminum, and we love that satin look. It, theoretically, you could destroy the finish and then polish it, but that would be a lot of work. And it then it would be tragic. Oh. And it would be tragic. You'd be destroying that, that matte satin, which we think is absolutely gorgeous. I prefer the satin to the shiny. Yeah, that's the way they came. So yes. when, uh, yeah, no, no polishing. And yeah, once once you ruin the, shi the matte finish, then it's, then it's ruined forever, too. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions coming in, and with the video quality, it's probably best not to keep <laughs> subjecting you, people one, one to One more it. taste of sunset, then. Let's show you. Let's show you. Okay. Yeah, chop, chop, chop video. There we go. Okay, guys. Thank you much for joining us. Happy Valentine's Day. And uh, uh, we'll Next up is the Entrepreneur Summit for us. Yay.